Grace and peace from the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all today. Welcome to Catoctin Presbyterian Church Worship Online. I'm Pastor David Douthat, and we are really glad to have you with us today. Whether you're a lifelong member or a first-time visitor, whether you're with us live online or watching on the video later, whether you're a devoted disciple of Jesus or not even sure if you believe in God, Whoever you are, wherever you are, you are welcome here with us. We'd love for you to let us know that you are here, what's on your mind, and if you have any prayer requests. So leave us a note in the chat, or leave a comment on the video, or send us an email at cpc at catoctin.org. If you're with us live and haven't already done so, please mute your microphone and stop your camera during the service. But then go ahead and join in the readings and responses and sing the hymns, because God will enjoy hearing you whether we can or not. We have a time of fellowship after the service is over, so if you can, please stick around and say hello to your fellow worshipers. Well, now, worship is our number one job as disciples. So, let's put everything else down for a moment. Take a few deep breaths. Calm our hearts and minds. And let's give ourselves fully to the Lord as we begin our service this morning. Once again, the peace of Christ be with you all. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Let us worship God. 
Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to the Lord. Sing praises. Tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love, joy, and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's join together for opening him.
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin and the sin of the world. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have refused to hear the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. Children of God, believe the good news. In Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, we are are forgiven. forgiven. Since God has made peace with us through Jesus, let us be at peace with one another. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Peace be with all of you. Let us pray. living God, help us so to hear your holy word that we may truly understand, that understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is Romans chapter 10, verses 5 through 15. For uh, Moses writes that the law's way of making a person right with God requires obedience to all of its commands. But faith's way of getting right with God says, don't say in your heart, who will go up to heaven to bring Christ down to earth. And don't say who will go down to the place of the dead to bring Christ back to life again. In fact, it says the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. And that message is the very message about faith that we preach. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved. As the scripture tells us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him to save them because they believe in him? 
And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anybody go and tell them without being sent? That is why the scriptures say, how beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you, Richard. The gospel lesson today comes from the book of Matthew, from chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. We'll be using the New Living Translation. Uh, there's some background that I'll talk about uh, when we get into the sermon. So listen again for the word of God. Immediately after this, and that's the part I'll tell you about later, immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake, while he sent the people home. And after sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. And when the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. And in their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. I am here. Then Peter called to him. Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So, Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified, and he began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. And the disciples worshipped him. You are truly the Son of God, they exclaimed. May God bless to us this and every reading from Holy Scripture. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Maybe some of you are old enough to remember the television show Mission Impossible. I'm just barely old enough, really honest, but um, uh, we, it, it's a, a lovely old show, and it's a show about spies, which is pretty cool. And um, it was one of the really interesting programs um, back in the 60s. So it was sort of Cold War era, and it was about this group of spies who um, they were kind of the last resort for for our uh, for our country. So when the when the country was hard pressed and and um, there was something that needed to be taken care of internationally, uh, but they they couldn't do it publicly. Uh, 
they would send out the Impossible Missions Force, the IMF. And it was led, of course, by Peter Graves. Um, and so they had this team of specialists who would be, uh, um, each one had a, a specialty uh, and they got them all together and they'd have these elaborate plans and uh, they would do all sorts of covert sorts of things. And, and uh, it, it was just a lot of fun. And in, in the early episodes, everything went smoothly and like clockwork. And then eventually, you know, it, that everything going smoothly doesn't make for good drama. So um, they built in more opportunities where things started to go wrong in the middle of the operation. And then they'd either have to improvise or uh, it turns out that they had actually planned for that thing to go wrong or sometimes they just got lucky. Uh, but everything always turned out in the end. But they, they uh, it, I don't know. It, it was a lot of fun. And it had the best theme show, theme song on television ever. And, so, and it was so good that they've made like six or seven movies about it since with, with Tom Cruise. So um, anyway, that, that sense that when things got impossible, uh, these guys would get it done. Well, in our scripture lesson today, um, Jesus is coming off some pretty remarkable experiences himself. So uh, in the story immediately previous to this, it's the feeding of the multitude. Now, the way that we got to that, we have to back up a few chapters, actually. And it's important to do that so you get a sense of all of this. So um, Jesus had been having a really pretty lousy week up to this point. And it started off that he uh, was fighting with the Pharisees and arguing with them about faith and practice. And, you know, sometimes arguing with people about those sorts of things can be, can be fun or energizing, but if you do too much of it, you know, it just kind of gets to be a drag. And so uh, Jesus is, is fighting with them and he's wrestling because he sees their, their, what he would call their hypocrisy. And, um, and so, you know, that can be really draining sometimes. And then from there, he goes on to teach people in parables, and nobody understands what he's talking about. And even his disciples don't really get the point. They don't understand. They come and say, tell us what you were talking about, because we don't get it. So, okay, it's like this, you know. And so his teaching is just kind of out there, and nobody's getting it. And then he goes to his hometown of Nazareth and has this really awkward and uncomfortable exchange in worship there where uh, they, at first they're really pleased to see him and to hear what he has to say, but then they're like, what? where did he get all this? And who does he think he is? Doesn't he know his place? And so then he says, well, you know, sometimes you have to go away from your home before people recognize how great you are. <laughs> And uh, they take it as an insult, and it gets ugly, and it's, it's not, not good. And then, after that, uh, we have the story of Herod uh, and how John the Baptist came to his end, that Herod had had John arrested, and then there was the whole thing with the party and the dancing and... and um, and his wife, through her daughter, asks for the head of John the Baptist on a platter and gets that. And so John is beheaded, and Jesus gets the news about that. So all of these things leading up to all this, and, and it says when Jesus heard the news about John, he withdrew with his disciples. He said, let's go to a deserted place to be alone for a while. And even that doesn't really work out. So they get there, and there's this enormous crowd. And it tells us at the end of the story, it was 5,000 men, not to mention the women and children, which probably should have done. But anyway, it would have been a bigger crowd than, uh, than most of the communities around Galilee. So big crowd. 
and he gets there and you can imagine that he's exhausted he's questioning what am i doing you know is this saving humanity even possible because nobody gets it and he gets there and here are all these people and it says in one place that they were like sheep without a shepherd and so he has compassion on them and he engages with the crowd and he heals everyone there who has any sort of disease. And then as it gets later and later, the disciples come and they say, hey, it's, uh, it's getting late, you know, and there's nothing here. Send them away so that, you know, they can eat or they'll starve. And Jesus is like, what? No, you give them something to eat. And they're like, what? We, no, we, look, we've got five loaves of bread and a couple of fish. That's all we've got. And Jesus is bringing it. And then this miracle happens where he blesses, breaks, and gives it to them. And then the watches as the disciples pass out that little bit of food to 10,000 people. And everyone has enough and more. And so that's all that is going before we get to the beginning of the story. And that's where we start uh, the story. And so that's what it says when immediately after this, Jesus sends the disciples across the lake. And so, um, you know, here we have him uh, probably just really wrestling with his calling at that point, you know, the humanity of Jesus, wondering, is this, how could this possibly work out, any of this? And, and in, when he gets there, you know, he could have said, when he saw the crowd, he said, oh, wrong deserted place. Let's go find another deserted place. But he doesn't. Instead, he engages with the crowd. He gets in there with the crowd, and this miracle happens. And you, you kind of get the sense that, you know, after that, everybody is pumped up. Everybody is excited because how did that happen? And so Jesus sends the disciples out to go back across the lake, and he dismisses the crowd, and then he goes to pray. And so, you, you know, after all of those things, he goes to prayer for a long time. And I can kind of imagine that the, the energy of that engagement, the energy of that miracle, and then to be in the presence of God in prayer, recharged his batteries and rejuvenated him and he recaptured the, the energy of his vision in such a way that he's like, yes, this is possible. I can do this. God is with me, and let's go. And he gets so pumped up that he decides to take the scenic route to meet the disciples by walking across the sea. The disciples, meanwhile, are not having such a great time. They're out there in the boat and the waves and the wind are against them and they are hard pressed and they're making little progress. And then they see this thing happen where Jesus is walking to them on the water. And you know that's not possible. And they look and they see somebody walking across the water. That's impossible. Nobody can do that. It must be a ghost. And Jesus says, no, I'm not a ghost. It's, I, it's me here. Take heart. Be of good courage. It's, it's Jesus. Well, Peter, you know, Peter's the kind of guy who has that bull in a china shop kind of approach to life. And he says, all right, if it's you, then tell me to come out to you on the water. <laughs> like, you know, if it's a ghost or a demon or something, that wouldn't be fun. Oh, yeah, sure, come on. <laughs> Let's see what happens. 
but it's not, of course, it's Jesus. And so he says, yes, by all means, come, join me. And Peter gets out of the boat. He gets out of the boat and he walks on the water. He's doing this impossible thing. That's incredible. Can you imagine the feeling? And then he gets out there probably most of the way. And then he finally notices, I, I'm on the water and wind and waves. And he gets distracted and he lets his fear get the better of him. And he begins to sink. You know, it's, it's like the wind said to him, you're doing something impossible. You can't do that. And he believed it. And because he stopped believing that he could, then he couldn't. And he begins to sink. And Jesus grabs him when he prays. He says, Lord, help me. And he, Jesus grabs him. And now I imagine that Jesus pulled him up so that he was walking on the water again and not just dragging him through the lake <laughs> when they go back to the boat, right? So he pulls him back up and says, oh, you little faith. Why did you doubt? You were doing great. Why did you doubt? And Jesus uses that phrase, you of little faith, or you little faith as a noun. Um, in a number of places, generally to people who have already experienced the power of God and ought to know better. But they let their fear get in the way. They let their fear take control and then start to believe that it isn't possible, that what they're trying or what they want, are, are that this is impossible. And when you give in to believing it's impossible, then Jesus says, you of little faith. To be paralyzed by fear when you know God's power, to decide that something is impossible for God to handle, oh, you of little faith. But you know, Peter, yeah, Peter doubted, but then again, Peter walked. Peter engaged. He got out of the boat. He went out and he did the thing. He walked on the water far enough to sink I mean, <laughs> right? and to be saved by Jesus. He walked on the water. He got out of the boat. Well, what about us then? You know, these, these days, a lot of us feel hard pressed and like we're making little progress, especially with all the big things, you know, like COVID and racism and poverty and corruption and injustice. Hard pressed, the winds are blowing in our face and the waves are crashing against our boat. And, you know, maybe in our personal lives too, there are things where we feel hard pressed and we're starting to think, man, I don't know that this is possible. I think it might be impossible. You know, it might be something as small as, as doing the chores around the house or, um, you know, getting through distance learning, not a small thing, but, uh, you know, it, it could be that. Uh, have to do that again. Another Zoom meeting, right? Um, maybe it's something like that, or maybe it's trying to make new friends in, a, in some situation. Maybe it's believing that this heartache, this heartbreak will never heal. Maybe it's being overcome by illness or disability and thinking that this will never end. Maybe it's something like praying for your enemies, praying for the opposition, praying for people that you don't want to pray for. Maybe it's 
forgiving someone for a deep wound. Maybe it's breaking a bad habit or an addiction. Whatever it is, whatever it is that your heart is telling you, it's impossible. You can't do it. That's when Jesus comes walking to us. He says, come on, come on, let's do it. Come on out. Get out of that boat. Let's go. Let's do it. And so that's the time when we have to breathe. Take a few breaths. Believe and engage and pray. Now, I don't know which order is the best for all of that, but those things have to happen. You have to breathe, you have to believe, engage, and pray. And you will find in that case, when you do that, Jesus is there saying, be of good courage, we can do this. Because it worked for him, it worked for Peter, it can work for you, it can work for me. Now, it doesn't mean that everything is going to work out perfectly just the way you imagine it or just the way uh, you want it to. But it does mean that you will have the opportunity to experience the power of God at work in you through Jesus Christ. When we take that opportunity and get out of the boat, And we get to be God's impossible mission force. We get to go out and prove that there is a God in the land who can do unthinkable, impossible things. And change the world. Change our lives and change the lives of those around us. And we do that thing that we say we want to do every week. Bear witness to the love, mercy, and grace, the power of Jesus Christ brothers and sisters, siblings and friends, be of good courage. Christ Jesus is coming to us and longing for us to engage and get out of the boat. Don't be afraid. This day and forevermore, thanks be to God. Amen. All right. Nope. This. There we go. Okay. There we go. All right. Well, it is time to. Uh, join together in our prayers, and so uh, time to join, uh, uh, to bring our joys, our concerns, and our laments, and we invite you to uh, share them in the chat, or uh, leave them in the comments, or send us an email, and uh, we have quite a lot of things that we've been praying for. This is our list from the Wednesday prayer meeting from this past week, and so uh, we hope that you will join us for that if you have opportunity. Uh, uh, we always need more prayers. So um, uh, here's the list. Um, as far as I have heard, uh, Don's dad, Fred, is still hanging on. So we want to pray for them. Of course, Brenda and Connie and uh, Craig's mother and Jonathan, and, uh, everybody, uh, Jean and Joan and Teresa, Phil, let's just name them all here. Uh, I say Jonathan and Amy's mom and Claire, Jennifer, Susan's friend, Mrs. Haight, uh, the people of Beirut, uh, people suffering from Isaiah, people suffering from wildfires, from COVID, uh, the bereaved and those who mourn, those seeking justice for those who are slow to give it, families that are estranged, the leaders of our nation and of the world, for healing of divisions, strength for the weary, for those seeking a home, for truth, for schools, administrators, teachers, parents, staff, students, uh, workers with healthcare needs, 
for pennies from heaven or manna from heaven, however you want to think about that, for hope and kindness. I want to pray for Steve's 90-year-old mom, Barbara, who is hospitalized, and um, uh, for Jeff, celebrating 64 years on the planet, 64 turns around the sun, so that's pretty cool. Um, Molly, on, there's a notebook beside my chair out there, and there are two things written on it, and I forgot to add them to the list. One of them was Steve's mom if you could look and share that with me. Um, for Julie, uh, mud in the basement, not cool. Lots of people I think probably had that. We had uh, water in the basement at the church after the big storm the other night. And so thanks to the Douglases and Macintoshes who helped to clean all of that up and clean it out. Uh, wow. So um, quite the gully washer. Can you hear me? Yeah. Don Pablo. Priscilla's stepfather in Honduras. I there spoke. we go. Right, thank you. Don Pablo uh, in Honduras um, with COVID-19. And, and you mentioned Steve's mom. Yeah. That was the only other thing that was on there. Okay, good, thank you. Yep. All right. So, um, for all of these concerns and all the others on our hearts and minds, and please feel free to uh, go ahead and leave whatever else as we go ahead, um, put it in the chat. But let us join our hearts together in common prayer. Gracious and loving God, as we come before you today, we are so thankful for your power and strength, for your grace and mercy shown to us most perfectly in Jesus Christ, our Lord. We thank you that uh, you are with us and that you are here to encourage us to do the things that we can only begin to imagine sometimes, to, uh, to carry out your will in the world and that you invite us and call us forth to trust in you and to believe where things seem to be impossible, where, where normal thought would say, that ain't going to happen. But our faith says, yes, believe. So we thank you for the ways that you have changed our lives through faith and the ways that you are calling us to change and to change the world. We thank you that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we have gifts and abilities to do that kind of work, to do our part as part of that specialized team you've put together called the church to carry off these missions. We thank you that you provide for us not only those gifts, but the resources that we need to do the things that need to be done. So we thank you for the folks in our lives that we share the journey with, that we share the work with. We thank you for home and food and opportunities to serve and opportunities to do good and to be better. We thank you for the gift of the church its outreach, its, uh, its message, its hope, the way that we gather and build one another up. We thank you for those who have passed along faith to us and shown us the road to walk and invited us on the journey. We thank you for the ways that you have answered prayers for people who have found hope, for those who have found healing, for walls broken down, for forgiveness, for mercy at work in the world, for goodness wherever we may find it, and beauty. And so, Lord, we pray that all of those things, the faith, the hope, the love, will grow in us, grow in our hearts day by day, so that we can indeed, as Jesus said, be of good courage, 
to take heart and to know that you are at work in the world. And so, Lord, we are bold to lift up our, our concerns, our laments, our hopes for things to be set right in the world. And so we pray for all of these whom we have named before you. We pray for those whose hearts are broken. We pray for those whose bodies are broken. We pray for those who are struggling in mind and spirit, that they would know the power of your healing. We pray for those that we love who are aging or struggling. And we pray for those who are near and far from us. We pray for those who are estranged. We pray for our nation, for our world, for our leaders, that wisdom and compassion would be the order of the day. That you would help us find ways to break down the dividing walls that we might see one another as children of God, that we might share and share alike. We pray for those who are wrestling because of COVID-19. We pray for those struggling against natural disasters. We pray for those struggling because of human disasters. We pray for the helpers, those who have the courage to run in. We pray for the enslaved, that they may find freedom. We pray for the oppressed, that they may be lifted up. We pray for our prayers, that their hearts might be changed. We pray even for ourselves. Lord, you know our struggles. You know our hopes and our joys. You know the places where we need to grow and the places where we need to learn to engage. Call us forth. Help us to breathe, to engage to call on you and to trust in you so that we can as the children of God and show the world what it means when we say that Jesus saves. All these things we ask in the strong name of Jesus our Lord who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And with the boldness of the children of God, we pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to open your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is calling on you to come out and to be with him on the water in new and different ways that you, you might call on him as Lord and Savior in deeper ways today. I'd be glad to talk with you about that or anything else you have questions about or want to pray about, or if you just want to talk, that's lovely. I'd love to spend some time with you. We take time in the service, too, to remember that we are invited to give of ourselves. And so uh, 
all, as always, a word of thanks to all who have been able to support us financially in our ministry. Uh, it, things have been going really well that way. Pledges are coming in, so thank you so much. And uh, all the gifts that, that have come in, we thank you all very much. If you are able uh, to continue to do so, we invite you to offer your gifts, uh, either by going to katoktan.org slash give, or mailing us a check, or have your bank mail us a check, or use whatever other online options your bank may offer. Uh, you can buy stuff at smile.amazon.com and choose Catoctin Church as your charity. You can also help with uh, the Loudon Hunger Relief uh, food donations. Uh, we still have the big blue box on the porch at the church, and you can put something in there and uh, uh, help those folks who are in need in our community. If you yourself are in need, then we want to be able to help you. And we've got folks who are ready, willing, and able. So uh, if you need help with errands or you're feeling lonely, if you need someone to pray with, or if you're running short on, on money, uh, give us a call at 571-293-6543. That's 293-6543. And uh, we will do our best to help you. You might wonder why I have this picture. That's the, uh, the original mounting block there in front of the church. So uh, we want to give you a step up if we can. I don't know if you picked that up, but there it is. Okay. So uh, for all the ways that God calls us and that we are able to uh, give ourselves, let's dedicate ourselves in prayer. Oh, God who calls us from death to life, we give ourselves to you. And with the church in every age, we thank you for your saving in Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. And let's sing. you to join us, as I mentioned before, at our Wednesday prayer meeting, six o'clock on Wednesdays, right here in this very Zoom room. We'd love to have you come help us to pray for the world, for those whom we love, and even for ourselves. Coming up this week, we have uh, confirmation. We're going to do a, a check-in uh, with confirmation at 1.30 today, so please join us. We're wrapping up. We've got a date set to meet with the session, so the deadline is fixed, so we, got, we need to talk about that. So we'll see you at 1.30 class. Um, new, Mat new Matrix team is meeting on Tuesday at 4 o'clock in this very Zoom room and uh, prayer meeting, as I mentioned. And then next Sunday, the theme for the service is going to be our New Matrix process, and the Ma New Matrix team is going to be helping to lead the service. So uh, um, you, you're going to want to see what, we're, what we've been working on, see and hear what we've been working on, and uh, I think it's going to be pretty cool. So I hope you'll join us next Sunday for worship to hear all about it and uh, or at least some about it there's a lot so uh, we're going to do our best to uh, let you let you know what we've learned and where we think uh, we're going next so join us for that if there are other things that i've missed please do be sure to let me know drop me an email or a text and and uh, we'll make sure to and feel free to share the service with your friends, neighbors, coworkers, whomever you think might be, uh, might benefit from being with us. Send them that invitation email or share it on Facebook or send them the link for the service afterwards. 
All right. So that brings us to the end. And a word of thanks. Uh, Molly and I had a lovely vacation for two weeks, and I'm so grateful to uh, Connie and Sue and Alexander who covered the service for us uh, the last two weeks. And um, it's so good to, to know that we can go away and that everything is going to be okay, that we've got leadership that can handle whatever might come up. And uh, so we're feeling good and refreshed uh, and um, looking forward to all that the Lord has in store for us next. So thanks for the opportunity. We appreciate that very much. All right. So let's uh, then uh, extend a hand of blessing to those around us as we offer the charge and benediction. So now as you go out from the service of worship, be of good cheer. Render to no one evil for evil, but support the faint-hearted and help the suffering. Honor all people, rejoicing in the love, mercy, grace, and power of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever you do, be in prayer. And whomever you meet, treat them like children of God. And whatever you say, breathe grace and peace, doing everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you, place his cheek next to yours, and give you peace, both this day and forevermore. And let all God's children say, Amen.